Welcome to Delusional Word Salad, now in 3D. I'm Seth, a beer-drinking enthuser and enjoyer of things that are enthusiastic and enjoyable. With me is my brother Jake, who happens to exist despite all laws of nature. And Alex, a shifty man of even shiftier shiftitudes. <laughs> I got some good news, guys. After a couple of months of arguing on the phone with our sponsor, Repinut Co., I finally got him to cough up the dough for a car. You have a car. I have a car. Hell, even Jake has something that passes for a car. A company car, Alex. <laughs> One for running company errands and the like. I mean, they gave us a measly 15000 discretionary fund to go out there and finance a new car. It's like having a timeshare. Jake, Repinoco specifically included a clause that states very clearly that you're not allowed to use it as a second Fine, home. fine. Like having a mobile home, but different. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. Go down to a dealership and buy a modest but fuel-efficient car that helps the environment and, more importantly, saves us money. No. Don't be a dumbass. We're getting a fucking Hummer. That's like two mobile homes in one. I don't know how expensive Hummers are, but uh, I'm reasonably certain they're much more expensive than 15 grand. Oh, please. They stopped making the damn things. Probably because they were so expensive. They'd have to get way cheap now because they want to get rid of them. Come on, guys. Use a little common sense. But wouldn't that put it into a rare car status? You know, since there aren't going to be any more, wouldn't that... Improve the intrinsic value of each individual car on the market? Jake, you're an idiot. And Seth, you clearly underestimate my ability to talk someone into a better deal. You mean con, lie, steal, and commit a variety of other felonies to get the better deal. Potato Poe Hummer. Remember, they're only felonies if you go to court for them. Growing old is a natural part of life. The inevitable decline of a once limber and expansive mind is something that everyone has to come to terms with. As time moves on, neurons don't fire off as fast and diseases like Alzheimer's and such riddle the brain. Unfortunately for me, I don't have to wait for that to happen, as it seems my daily regiment of copious quantities of alcohol and whatever mind-bending chemicals I can get my hands on have produced a similar effect about 40 years too early. That puts me ahead of the curve. I woke up underneath my desk again and had to consult a liquor store receipt to determine the relative date. As I finally came to, I took off my Spider-Man pajamas and slipped back into my slacks. Come in. Are you Bill Slipman? Been a while since I checked, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hi, I'm Larry Daniels. Uh, nice to meet you. Flattery gets you nowhere. What can I do for you? Well, it's about my grandmother. Uh, she's living at a Berkham Wood Village. The retirement home? That's where they put down old people when their kids don't want them anymore, right? No, it's an assisted living community. My folks had a place like that for my grandmother. It was called a shed. What's the trouble? Well, she won't say it. But I think the staff there are abusing her. How so? Like, putting pickled eggs into her orifices? What? No, like, pushing her around, hitting her. Every time we make our monthly visit, she has a new bruise and says she fell down again. One time a bruise even had a... Mark in the shape of a wedding ring on it. But why? I mean, I can see the appeal of beating up a frail old person who can't fight back. But what's to gain? I don't know, but I was hoping you'd look into it. I mean, maybe it is some new medication that's making her more prone to accidents, but... but. Wait a minute. Did you say medication? Yes. My grandmother has epilepsy. Sold. Head out right now. The promise of taking meds from feeble old people who can't do anything about it was too great to pass up. I was gonna crack this case, or accidentally OD trying. Alright guys, we're here. So what's our game plan? Oh! What if we convince the dealer that the Hummer is haunted and offer to take it off his hands? Huh? That's retarded. Anyways, uh, I was thinking we play hard to get, you know? Really make him think he's gotta work to get our 15,000. Then, wait. How much have you had to drink today, Seth? Uh, that'd be my ninth dose of vitamin beer for the day. And it's only 10 a.m. Way to live the dream. Well, I was thinking, we pull good cop, bad cop. You'll sternly but subtly point out problems with everything. You know, the car, the dealership, the dealer, the dealer's family. And I'll casually reassure you and him that this is the most practical way to go. I can do that. And I'll tell him about the ghosts. Shut up, Jake. Just do whatever. The dealer's coming over. Everyone on their A-game. Hey, fellas. Welcome to the Portland Certified Pre-Owned GM Dealership. I'm Wade. Pleased to meet you. I'm not. I can feel the paranormal activity, guys. Jake, stop winking. 
I'm sorry, our friend here has a learning disability of unspecified origin. Oh, that's unfortunate. What can I help you with today? Well, we're looking to buy a company car. We're with the show Delusional Word Salad. It's a popular podcast. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it. No. Oh, well, it's real big. Anyways, uh, we're looking to get a Hummer as our company car. It's told that Hummers are the most dependable vehicles ever built. Oh, yeah? No one told me that. Well, you're in luck. We only have two H1 Alphas left on the lot. Which one is the cooler one? Well, that depends on what you think is cool. Do any of them have flames? No, none of them do. Look, you know we want the goddamn thing. Why are you making this hard? Let's just go over there and look at them. And you guys can decide for yourselves. Guys, I got a really spooky feeling right about now. Shut up, Jake. Jake. And here we are. Damn. That's like the chariot that's going to bring Michael at the second coming of Christ. I bet the piece of shit breaks down before we even get it off the lot. That's what I think. Oh, no, sir. All our vehicles have a guarantee, especially the more exotic vehicles such as the uh, H1 here. What kind of guarantee? Guarantee that you'll kindly give us a reach around after you fuck us good and deep on those prices? Now wait just a Shut minute. Shut up, Seth. Tone it down a bit. I think what my friend here is trying to get at in a very roundabout way is... How much do these go for? This model right here is 174000 give or take, depending on warranty options. Oh! Uh, uh, that, that, that's, uh, exactly what we figured it was, it was gonna be. Down to the penny. Uh, we need to talk this over privately for a second. Be right back. So, yeah, that's quite a fucking bit more than 15 grand, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's gonna take some really, really aggressive negotiation to nick that down by 90%. New idea. Let's go for a test drive, take him to a bar, get him a bit loose with a few drinks, and bango. Problem solved. 15,000. It'll be especially easy once he finds out there are ghosts in it, too. You ready, Seth? To drive a Hummer without having the police chase me? Hell yeah, I am. So what have you gentlemen decided? We've decided <clears throat> that we won't buy any of your bullshit till we've driven the fucking thing. That's what we decided. Yeah, to we we really gotta know if this car will suit our demanding needs, sir. This vehicle was designed to travel almost anywhere on the surface of the earth. Yeah, I bet you pricks would say you could drive to the bottom of the ocean if you thought I'd make you a few fucking bucks. So how about that test drive? Uh, all right, sirs, that's no problem at all. The following is an unpaid advertisement from Repinut Co. Hi, my name is Aaron and I'm here from Repinut Co. with a fantastic brand new product. This product will change your life. Eight of the seven people who bought it have said it has improved their endurance. It conditions your hair. It makes managing bills a snap. Don't understand what's going on in the world? Well then this is the product for you. What is it? Oh, it's a brand new, fresh off the drawing board, huh? huh? Refinoco proudly presents uh, FDA certified um, your original sounding kit. I'm sorry, Aaron. I don't think the audience caught that. Too bad! These puppies will be flying off the shelves as soon as people know what they are. People need to know what the product is, Aaron. Oh, it's a goddamn uh, Co. Urethral sounding kit. And what is urethral sounding? All you stupid consumer whores have cell phones, so look it up! Use your urethral sounding kit to house train your dog, loosen up a clogged sink, punish children, fill a taxi, open a canned beverage, or inconceivably derive pleasure from shoving a cylindrical object down your cock hole! Wow, that is a product. <laughs> it sure is, Bob! A product I signed into existence out of sheer ignorance. We literally have warehouses full of these unsold urethral sounding kits. A warehouse so full that if I can't get rid of them, I'm losing my job! My wife will leave me and take my kids! Sounds like a real buyer's market for this product, Aaron. My own company is threatening to sue me if I don't fix this horrifying mess. I am literally giving these away! Please, God, somebody take these fucking things away! Call now and get yours today. I used the last of my methadone on the way to Berkham Wood Village. The shakes had just started in when I calmly barged through the door screaming. Bill Sudman, Portland's mess stick! Where'd you keep your medication? Hey, what are you doing? Why are you yelling? I've got a lead! I'll be back! As I stumbled half-conscious into the common area, I could feel the sweat dripping out of every pore in my body. 
If I didn't get any psychoactive chemicals into my brain soon, I was gonna start remembering things. Yo, yo, what's that you're using? It's glue. I'm making a glitter picture for crafts class. Give me that! God damn it! Fucked again by safe for kids glue. You got any markers? I think there are some over there on that table. That's the money. God damn it, this is low grade shit. What do you keep the fat fucking chisel tip pens? Why are you yelling at me? Wait, that bottle over there. What's in it? Those are my anti convulsant medications. Jackpot, give them here. Evidently, taking 40 anti convulsants at once has a fairly immediate effect. I stopped shaking, that's for damn sure. I slipped over in a chair and stared cross eyed at the old lady from across the table. I broke the silence. You, Gladys? Gladys Daniels? Yes, dear, that's me. I'm Bill Slipman, Portland's best dick. Your son sent me here to check up on you. Oh, he didn't need to do that. He was just here last week. He's concerned about you. How are they treating you here? Oh, well enough, I suppose. Your son didn't mention that you were a cripple. What's with the wheelchair? Oh, ah, uh, clumsy old me again. Fell down in the tub, broke my darned leg. Gladys, there's anyone you can trust on this earth. It's me. It's not like I just work for the highest bidder. Except when I do. How did you really hurt your leg? There's something very wrong in this place. What do you mean? There's something evil. Something very, very evil in this place. Like Tom Cruise evil or Honey Boo Boo evil? The devil kind of evil. The whole staff. Something ain't right with them. Something downright evil. How do you mean? They just look like regular orderlies to me. Last week, they took Tom Calhoun in the middle of the night, drug him into that back room in their office, and we never saw him again. Maybe he passed away in the night. He was perfectly healthy. He was the youngest of all of us. Maybe his family came and got him. Who knows? If you don't believe me, then go check that room out for yourself. I don't know what's in there. But I promise you on my mother's grave that whatever is in there ain't nothing good. All right, all right. Well, go check it out. Don't roll anywhere. I'll be right back. I made my way back to the front desk, slightly more collected than when I had come through before. I spotted the door that Gladys had mentioned. There were orderlies on both sides of it, indicating to me that there was something worth protecting in there. I knew I needed to use all my guile and charm to get into that room. Hey, fuckface, let me see what's in that room. Excuse me? That room. What's in it? It's the broom closet. Well, open it. I'm kind of busy. It's just the broom closet. I see. Say, what would it take to get you sons of bitches out of this office? A major emergency? Something like that. Why do you ask? Is there something I could help you with, sir? Oh, no, no. I'm just, I'm just curious. I'll be, um, I'll be over here. Where you can't see me. Not starting any major emergency. Sir? What are you doing? What's that flickering sound? Sir? Are you trying to start a fire? We can see you! No, uh I'm holding my breath. That means I'm invisible. All right, sir. It's time for you to go. No, I'm invisible. Sir? I'm calling security right now. Hello? Yeah, some random bum just came in. <coughs> With one honorable shot square in the nuts, I had my window to get to that room and find out what the hell was going on here. I ran to the door and threw it open. They were right. It was a pretty typical broom closet. Various brooms and mops were carefully set on either side of the massive portal to hell in the center of the room. It seemed like a pretty poor aesthetic choice to me. Oh, portal to hell. Wait! Portal to hell? What the fuck? When it finally dawned on my addled brain what the implications of a portal to hell were, I knew we were all in some deep shit. The sound of the orderlies approaching made me snap my head back in their direction. The orderlies appearance had changed. Somehow, inexplicably, ugly, twisted faces with misshapen horns on their heads, with unearthly long clawed fingers on each hand. My god, that crippled old bat was right. They approached me slowly as I went for my gun. Calm down, sir. Put the gun down. 
No one's gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm pretty sure this is the newest car I've ever driven. Oh. Well, what was the newest car you've driven? I'm uh, pretty sure I remember crashing a 94 Celica last year. I'm sorry. This is maybe a personal question, but have you been drinking? How am I supposed to know how well this thing handles if I drive it sober? That's the test of a high-quality vehicle right there. Oh. Um, uh, all right. Oh my gosh! Did anyone else see that back here? In the rearview mirror? What? That white sock you were waving around? No, it wasn't. It wasn't a white sock. It was a, it was a, it was a ghost. Anyway, so that price. I mean, man, that's pretty steep. And I, and I get it. You start high, so we can work it down. No, that price is pretty well set. I know, I know. Playing a little bit of hardball. I can respect that. I really do. No, sir. That's the absolute bottom price we can go. I get it, I get it, really. How about we go for a drink? You know, talk over the, the details, you know, the particulars of this car. I'm working, sir. Uh, I can't just duck out for a drink on the job. Eh, consider it a peaceful negotiation. Besides, we're already here. I can't drink on the job, and I can't really wiggle with that price. Look me in the eye, Wade. You want this to stay peaceful, right? Sure you do. That's what we all want. That's why you're going to go into that bar with us, sit your stupid ass down, and have a drink with us. You dig? Uh, oh, uh, all right. One drink's all right. Totally. We're all friends here. No need to do anything brash. I'll tell you who isn't friends. These ghosts in here. Shut up, Jake. All right, Wade, let's go grab a booth. You stay here, Wade, while we go grab some drinks. And uh, I'll try and talk these guys into some sound financing options. What do you want? I'll take an IPA, please. Splendid choice. We'll be back. All right, I'll have a pitcher of beer, a shot of bourbon, and a Shirley Temple. Uh, what do you guys want? Three draft rogue IPAs, please. All right, guys, so after about 30 seconds of thinking, we may have to up the ante on this negotiation business. I think it'll take more than a couple of drinks to make this guy settle on practically giving away a $200,000 car. What do you have in mind? Heroin. For fuck's sake, we've been down this road before, Alex. Yeah, only this time I actually measured the dose. Guys, just put a little bit into his drink, like this. And let the negotiations begin. He'll start getting sleepy and susceptible to suggestion. It's a win-win. Let's go win this car. Here's to a fantastic car, Wade. Bottoms up. Mm. No, Wade. All, mm. all, all of it. Drink it all, or it's uh, mm. it's it's bad luck. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Perfect. Mm. So let's just say that 174,000 is a bit out of our price range. I'm sorry, guys. There really isn't much much I can do about it. No. no. I bet you'll think of something. No, like, uh, really, my manager Dave, uh, he's, a, he's really a stickler for this stuff. Uh, I, I feel kind of weird, guys. Uh, what beer did you get? Rogue IPA, uh, what we all had. I'm, uh, gonna go to the, to the room to, to piss or something. Alrighty, Wade, you do that. We'll get you another round. I took both of the demonic orderlies down with one shot to the head each. I'd read enough Martha Stewart living to know that headshots were the only way to put down a demon for good. I could hear screams coming from the common area. The jig was up. I had exposed them and there was no going back. I ran back into the common area and took down two more demons. Oh my lord, Bill. What's going on? You were right, Gladys. I figured it all out. This is an evil place and they were trying to summon a portal to hell. They used the souls of old people to do it. It all makes such perfect sense. But, 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 but why? Gladys, patience is the devil's greatest tool. They use this place for subterfuge. No one really cares about old people. They figured correctly that if somebody shipped you here, they wouldn't care when you were gone. Now their secret is out, and we have to leave immediately. 
They were massing by the front desk where I slayed, where I, where I slew, 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 uh, killed two of the beasts. So the front door isn't an option. Gather everybody and head up to the roof. Why the roof? Why are you doing this? It's my duty to protect you guys. I'll get on the horn. Have a chopper here in no time. Please! Why are you doing this? Gladys, there's no time. Get to the roof now. But I'm in a wheelchair. Damn it. Wheelchairs are the devil's playground. All right. Over my shoulder you go. All right, the rest of you. Get to the roof now. I went over to the nearest phone and punched in a number. I had an old war buddy who owed me a favor. Eddie? Eddie, this is Bell. Look. There's no time to explain. Shit's hitting the fan and I need an evac chopper on the roof of Berkhamwood Village Retirement Home now. This is bad, Eddie. Like Operation Frequent Wind Bad. All right, Eddie. I owe you one after this. See you soon. I made my way to the staircase. More demons came around the corner. <laughs> You've taken your last soul. Beelza. Beezalza. Devil. <laughs> I got up to the roof and barricaded the door behind me. It wouldn't hold long. Not against the forces of Satan. All the old fucks were already up there. God damn it! Where the fuck is Eddie? Don't you fuck me now, you son of a bitch! As if answering my curse-laden prayer, the chopper arrived, hovering just off the edge of the roof. Oh God, it was close enough to board, so I started loading old people onto it as fast as I could. The demons were pounding at the door. I fired a few shots into it to keep them at bay. There's no time for me, Gladys. I know what I have to do. What are you going to do? I'll help you onto the chopper. I'll stay behind to hold them back. No, please, please, don't do this. No, please, I'll do anything. You're not well. There's no choice, Gladys. There comes a time in every man's life when he must sacrifice himself for the greater good. You have to live, Gladys. You have to live for me. You've got too many years ahead of you. Don't let my sacrifice have been in vain. Go out and tell the world what I've done. Live, damn it! Live! <laughs> Her voice faded as the chopper pulled out and headed off for safety. The demons were breaking through the door, and I had noticed that I suddenly felt very tired. <laughs> This is how he goes, I thought to myself, lighting a cigarette. I always figured I'd check out for the gunfight in the strip club, but a gunfight on the roof of an old folks' home against demons was pretty rad too. I held them back for as long as I could before I finally succumbed and blacked out. Alex, I thought you said that guy should be getting like, sluggish and suggestible. He looks... very off. But, uh, yeah, none, none of those things. Hmm, well, let's up the dosage. Careful reasoning would say that if a little didn't do very much, a lot will probably be very good. Science. Just add a little more to this beer, and bingo! Cars as good as ours now. Do you guys hear that? There's bugs in the wall. I, I can hear them skittering around like they're in my brain. Sure, whatever. Here, have another drink. Bottoms. Up. Oh. Wow, you really didn't need any coaching with it, did you? Now, how about that price on the Hummer? I, I can't feel my face. Do you feel my face? I don't feel any of yours either. Strange. I smell copper. Is that my blood? Well, we were wondering if maybe we could talk about slashing that price by, oh, 80 to 90 percent. You know, it, it just seems too steep a price in this kind of market. My blood is metal. I can't feel anything. I think, I think I'm invincible. I, I mean, really, there's no pain anymore. No more voices, no more scritching in my mind or words. It's silence. And, I mean, let's be honest here. Those tires, they're pretty used. So we should be comp the price of those since we're going to have to replace them anyways. I'm God. I am God. Watch this. Wait. What, 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 what are you doing with that spoon, Wade? Jesus Christ! Fucking eye out! Holy fuck, that's gnarly! I can't feel anything! <laughs> I am God! 
Yeah, yeah, you're a, you're a god. Definitely, you're you're a god who can surely see the practicalities of letting a fine vehicle like this go for a reasonable price of fifteen thousand to a group of reasonable guys like us. Now I must absorb its powers. This is how you become god. Wow, just eat the whole fucking thing. Uh, Jake, Jake, stop weeping. You're drawing attention. Oh god, maybe there really are ghosts. Holy fuck. Okay, uh, Wade, you you stay here in the booth, and uh, whatever you do, don't leave, cause uh, it's it's evil. So stay here, safe-ish and sound, and we'll be back in a minute. Let's just stuff a cocktail napkin in there. Yeah, G good as new. Be right back. All right, guys. I may have made a bit of a whoopsie daisy. Alex, what the hell is going on with this guy? He's not strung out. Why is he not strung out? Shouldn't he be nodding off or something? Yeah, you know, now about that. I think on my way out the door this morning, instead of grabbing a vial of heroin, I may have grabbed a vial of PCP instead. How the hell do you do that? Butterfingers! Wait, why the hell would you have PCP? Well, Seth, maybe in my spare time I'm modifying the behaviors of the local wildlife. No, 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 it's, it's irrelevant. And this is all that matters right now. The three of us have basically kidnapped a car dealer, got him geeked out on PCP, and he's eaten his own eyeball. Yeah, we know. We've been here the whole time. You know what this means? What? If we play our cards right and head back to the dealership right fucking now, we can probably get that fucking Hummer for free. What about his eye and all the goddamn blood? Just put a pair of sunglasses on him and tell everyone he's got a nosebleed. Problem solved. Let's go get our goddamn Hummer. When I came to, I was back in my office, sans the Spider-Man pajamas. My knuckles were bloody, and I felt like I'd been hit by a very drunk train. Someone was banging on my office door rather angrily. On in. <clears throat> I've been trying to get a hold of you for the last three days. Bill Slipman, pleased to meet you. I was here last week. Remember? I sent you to find out if the retirement home was abusing my grandma. Oh, yeah. How is Gladys? She's dead. Everyone there is dead. Haven't you heard the news? No. Last I heard, everyone there was better than ever. Some lunatic shot up the whole damn place, herded all the old people up to the roof, and pushed them all off to their deaths. That sounds... <clears throat> that, just, that, that sounds exaggerated. Everyone. Even my grandma. Even she was thrown off. Then the madman made a pentagram and gasoline and burned down the whole place. Well, maybe there was something evil in that place. Something the madman, as you call him, was trying to prevent from taking over the world. Like what? How would you protect anyone from anything by shooting orderlies and murdering old people? You know, try looking at it from his perspective. Maybe there were demons from hell. Maybe there weren't. Maybe that lunatic thought he was loading old people onto a helicopter that admittedly probably wasn't there after all. But I can assure you, deep in his heart, that madman was convinced that he was doing good. So maybe, just maybe, instead of labeling that man a lunatic or whatever, you should call him by what his drug-addled and warped mind genuinely believed he was. A hero. What in the name of God could have possibly convinced anyone who would do such a horrendous thing that they were a hero? <laughs> In the chopper you go! What are you? Uh, Why are you, you doing this? You're next. Wait, wait, look out. Live, damn it. I'm a hero, damn it. Hero! What the hell is going on back there? Oh, uh, just some rage and PCP fueled shenanigans. Nothing to worry about. Stop it, Wade. This is my side of the seat. Gremlins! Oh, please, Wade. First it was bees in your teeth. Then it was the devil in your car seat. Gremlins. Now it's gremlins eating your brain. Make up your minds. Gremlins! Gremlins! Gremlins, gremlins, gremlins! Wade, 
If you don't calm down and stop bashing your skull into the door, I'm gonna have to count to three. Alex, at this rate, we're never gonna make it to the dealership before he kills himself, let alone catch us a good deal on this Hummer. You need to, like, put a seatbelt on him at least. No way. I'm not just gonna waltz into this man's life and take away his independence. Besides, I'm not putting my hands anywhere near that eyeball-eating motherfucker's teeth. You know, Wade, some people just beat up Whitney Houston when they get high on PCP. Wasn't that crack? You explain the difference to this motherfucker. Fucking gremlins! 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 Don't be afraid! I told you this was my side! Quit leaning on me! Well, uh, good news? We don't have to worry about getting a good deal on this Hummer. Why's that? I think he killed himself. That, or he needs serious medical attention that we cannot possibly provide or alternately provide transport to. Don't worry, I got the bad news covered. I'm getting pulled over. Don't, don't do that. Alex, we only have two choices at this point. We either, A, pull over and take our chances with the dead, tweaked out corpse of a guy who ate his own fucking eye, or we go on a wild, improbably wildly unsuccessful police chase with the dead, tweaked out corpse of a guy who ate his own fucking eye. This thing will be out of gas in about four more miles anyways. Do you think the police believe in ghosts? You make a good point, Seth. Maybe with a little guile, we can talk our way out of this. We can tell them the ghost did it! License and registration, please. Yay, officer! Here's my license! Uh, we're, uh, we're actually test driving this summer. <laughs> Where's the dealer who's supposed to be with you? He's, uh, back there! He doesn't look too good. Is he alright? Yeah, he's dead tired. Alex, shut up! Uh, uh, yeah, he's just... Uh, you know, beat from work, so we really better get him back there so we can buy this car for illegally cheap. Wink, wink. Seth, you're not supposed to say wink when you're winking. That's like the opposite of a good thing. You line. shut He's up. He's tired because he has to deal with all these Jake, ghosts. I swear to God, I will fucking be within an inch of the vehicle. All of you. Slowly. What if we said no? Now. What about your friend there in the sunglasses? Hey, you. Get out of the vehicle now! Yeah, Wade. Get out of the car. Like, quit holding up the 5 0, man. He can't hear you because of all the go. Ow! Stop hitting, Alex! Sir, I'm gonna ask you one more time. Please, exit the vehicle. Oh no, he's got a knife. Bullshit, he does. I'm looking right at him. Look out, he is black. What? You kidding me? Uh, 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 he had a knife? Oh, shit. All right, boys, um, here's what's gonna happen. All of us are just gonna turn around and go home. My dash cam has been off for the last month, and this guy doesn't look like he comes from me, and actually is white. Uh, and you three. Yeah, you three. You three, take it easy. All's well that ends well. I don't know about all y'all. And I usually don't agree with the police. But, uh... Yeah, let's, uh... Go home.